Hello everyone! Today I'll be going over some more pre-installed programs that are related to the Craft OS file system. First program of the day is List. This program will list all of the files and directories that you have in your computer. Directory is the technical term for a folder. If you're using an advanced computer, the directories will appear green and the files will appear white. This only shows the files of the directory you are currently inside of. If you type the name of a directory as an argument, it will list all of the files and folders within that directory. If you want to view the contents of a subdirectory, meaning a folder within a folder, use a forward slash between the directory names. The folder that you always start in when you start your computer is called the root directory. If you're in a different folder, you can see the list of the contents of the root directory by typing list slash. The ROM folder we just listed is the folder that contains all of the program files for the CraftOS operating system. Everything within the ROM folder is set as read-only, which means you can only open and read the files, but you can't change or delete them. You can make a new directory by using the program mkdir. Just give it a name as an argument. Don't forget to use quotes if it has spaces. Now when you use the list command, you will see the new folder is in the list. Folders or directories are obviously the best way to keep your files organized. We should put our hello world.lua program into our newly created folder. To do this, type move, with the first argument being the name of the program, and the second argument being the name of the directory, slash, and the name of the program again. If you check the file list again, you will see that the file is gone. If you enter the list command with your directory, bear in mind it is case sensitive, you will see the program moved into there. If you want to run the program from this directory, you do it the same way you would otherwise, but you have to include the directory path. If you don't, it will try to run hello world.lua from the root directory, where the file no longer exists. This is kind of cumbersome, so I want to show you another way to do this. Type cd followed by a directory. This command changes the computer's focus from the root folder to whatever folder you just entered. In other words, we are now inside this folder and can run any program in this folder by just typing the name. To return to the root directory, type cd slash, or you can type cd dot dot to move to the first directory above the one you are currently in. This is primarily for easily returning to the previous folder if you're in a subfolder. If you want, you can also rename files and folders. Type rename followed by the name of the file you want to change, followed by the new name you want it to have. You have to make sure you include the directory if it's not your current directory. For example, if you use the file that's inside the folder you created, but its new name does not include that directory, it will remove the file from the folder and resave it to the root directory. But here's a fun fact, this is pretty much what the move command does. If you want to move a file to another location with a different name, it will rename the file. Essentially, move and rename do the exact same thing. They store the information in a file in memory, then they save the information to a new file at the specified location with its new name, and then delete the original file. But what if you don't want to delete the original file? What if you want to keep both files as copies? Well, there is a copy program for that. Let's rename our Hello World program back to what it originally was. Then run copy hello world.lua to new folder slash hello world copy.lua. Obviously, you want to use the name of the directory that you created. The copy program does the same exact thing as move and rename, but it skips the step of deleting the original file. So now we have two copies of the program. The original is in the root directory, and the copy is in the directory we created. Now let's say for some reason we don't want the copy anymore. Type delete, followed by the path of whatever you want to delete. The path being whatever directory plus the file you want to delete. You can also delete a whole directory this way. Keep in mind, this will permanently delete whatever you're deleting, and if it's a directory, that includes all contents inside the directory. There is no recycle bin and no way to get those items back, so be careful. Since I know that the copy of the program is the only thing in this directory, and I know that I want to delete the file, and I know that this folder no longer has a purpose, I will go ahead and delete the whole folder because I know what I'm doing. 
Now let's go back to the normal computer. Since the normal computer doesn't have color, we can't tell if ROM or Hello World are directories or files. Obviously we know what they are in hindsight, but let's say we were looking at a folder filled with completely unfamiliar items. The way we'd be able to tell is to use the type command. Type, type, followed by the path you want to check, and it will tell you whether that item is a file or directory. Last but not least, we have alias. If you run this program, it will show you all of the shortcut commands you can run for whatever programs you have. As you can see, most of the programs I've demonstrated today have a shortened version of them. Instead of copy, you can type cp. Instead of delete, you can type rm. Instead of list, you can type either dir or ls. Even clear, which I showed in part one of this lesson, has an alias. You can even set an alias for your own programs. To do this, type alias hw hello world to set an alias for our hello world program. Now, whenever you want to run your first program, instead of typing the whole file name, just type hw or whatever you want to set. To remove an alias, just type the command with the alias you want to remove and no other arguments. The help command for this program may have you believing you can send alias to another alias, but I've tested this and that is not the case. And that is all. Thank you guys for joining me on another lesson. I had to step away from programming to explain some important functionality with these computers, but next week I'll be getting back into writing programs. If you have any questions about what I covered in this lesson, feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you next week.